Hi there, my name is Catherine and I'm a happiness engineer at WordPress.com based in Montreal, Canada. I'm going to show you how to get going with a brand new WordPress.com site. So we're going to start by clicking Start Now. And the first thing to do is to choose a domain name. The domain is what people type in the address bar or click on to reach your site. So I want to see what domain names we're going to have as suggestions for us. And this site is going to be about my fabulous feline friends. So that's what I'm going to type in here and see what comes up. So the first thing you'll see is that a one-year domain registration is included with all paid plans. But I'm going to skip the domain registration and we're going to skip the paid plan entirely because we're going to go with a free plan and a free domain for the purpose of this demo. So I'm going to choose my fabulous feline friends .wordpress.com to get started and I'm going to select that. So it shows us the options for all the different paid plans that we have. We're going to bypass this and we're going to say start with a free site because everything we do in this demo will be available no matter what kind of plan you have, even a free plan. So it's setting up the site for us and we'll be ready in just a second. So now we're in the dashboard of the site we just created and we've got a checklist of different things we can do to start setting up our site. At the top left you'll also see that we can view the site right away. So I'm going to open this in a new tab and then I'm going to go to the tab to see what we have. So you can see that it's given us a whole bunch of content that we can now edit. Rather than giving you a completely blank slate, we've given you some pages that you can get going editing. So for example, your about page, your contact page, it's all full of placeholder content that you can edit and replace with your own. So let's go back to the dashboard. I want to show you the two key parts of a WordPress site, posts and pages. Let's click pages here under site. So you can see that this looks familiar, right? This corresponds to the pages that are in our menu here. And these are the four pages that we've given you to work with by default. But of course you can add to these pages, you can even remove these pages if you don't want a blog, for example, you can click the three little dots and trash it. Um, but to start off, we've given you these pages that you can work with. Now what's the difference between posts and pages? Well, posts is for information that we saw, like our about page or our contact page or different types of information like that. But posts is slightly different. If we go to posts, you'll see that we have three example posts that we've given you by default. And where do these posts show up? Well, they get pulled into your blog. So they get displayed in reverse chronological order, one underneath the other with the most recent post on top. And here on the site that we've set up for you, we also pull in the posts on the front page, this time in a grid display. So posts can be used for things like blogs or a news section or on any type of information that gets updated regularly. And so that's what posts are for. If we go back to pages, let's look at the home page. If you click the home, word home here and we see that it's our home page because it has the word home page here and has a little icon of a house. If you click on the title, this is going to open up the home page in the block editor. This is the WordPress editor and our posts and pages consist of chunks of content called blocks. And if we scroll down here, we can see that the editor shows us pretty much what we're seeing on the front page of our site. So if you click anywhere into, into your content, you can see that it tells you what kind of block you're in. So on the right here, it says block heading introduces new sections. And in all this content, you can say, you can type on top of it and replace it with your own. So we can have a different welcome message if we want. And within the content itself, you can make changes. So within the block itself, if I wanted to just italicize the word friends, I can do that. And the, the block settings on the side vary depending on what block you're in. So right now I clicked into this paragraph and you can see that I'm in a paragraph block and I can do things like change the color. So if I want to select yellow to make this stand out a bit more, that looks terrible. I'm not going to do that. Uh, or how about black? That looks good. So depending on what block you're in, you'll have different settings here on the right and different settings up here. If you hover over a block that can be moved, you'll get these little arrows. Sometimes you can move it up and down. Sometimes you can move it side to side. Here in the paragraph block, it's tucked between this button block and this heading block. If I hover and I want to move it up, I can move it up. And you'll see that 
it moves up here in the editor as well. So you can see what this looks like in real time. I'm going to move it down. You can do that. So let's do something. Let us I want to click and select this entire cover block. The cover block is an interesting block because it gives you an image in the background and then you can add more stuff on top of it. So <clears throat> any block you have where you see the three dots here on the side means you can click it and do different things. You can do something like inserting another block before this block. You can insert a block after this block. You can even click to remove this block if you want to remove it entirely. I want us to insert a block before. And you'll see that now we have the plus sign here. Anytime you see the plus sign, it means that you can click to insert a new block. And this is the block inserter here. And you can see that there are all kinds of blocks of all different types. You can insert code. You can insert um, a calendar. You can insert an appointment booking form. You can insert image galleries. All different kinds of things are available, so it's super cool. If you know what kind of block you want, but you don't want to go searching for it, and you know the name of it, you can type it in. So I want to insert an image block. So I'm going to click type image, and it comes right up here. So you can click image. Now for an image, you have to actually choose the image. So if I had an image on my hard drive that I wanted to put on my site, I would click upload. But I want to actually show you another cool feature. If you click select image, I want to show you this Pexels free photo library. So this is a free stock photo library that you can choose from and you can put any of these images on your site for free. So if I want to type in cat because I want an image of a cat to insert on our fabulous feline site and then click search, you can see what type of images are available. And there's lots of them. You can load more and it will show you more. But I want to click this image and insert this one. So you can click it and you insert by selecting that button, clicking select. It's going to copy the image into my media library. And there we go. Here's this beautiful orange feline. And so images have some important settings. One of the most important ones is called an alt text. You can say um, ginger cat in profile with eyes closed. This is, a, is an important setting because if you are visually impaired and you're having a tool called a screen reader reading out the content of the site to you, it's going to read out the alt text. It's also important for search engines. Search engines read the text in here. So this is an update we've made to our page. Before I save the change, I want to preview. So I'm going to click preview to see what it looks like. And that looks good. So we want to close this and then save the change we made. Since this page is already published, the button says update. So we click that to save the change. Great. Now I'm going to click the W on the left here to get back to our dashboard. So now I want to add a new page. So if you click add new page, we're going to see an interesting feature we have called layouts. Layouts lets you choose from a pre-made design for a different type of page. So what does this mean? What it means is we've gathered some pre-made different designs into groups that you can choose from with some placeholder or dummy content. So for example, you've got six different possible layouts for an about page. And if you click on it, you will see an example of what it looks like. And of course, all this is content that you can edit yourself. We have also placeholder content for a blog page if you want. And this one has a little sidebar on the side, so it's kind of interesting. We have contact pages, food menus, portfolios. If you're a visual artist or creator, we have nice layouts for portfolios. In my case, I want to have a services page because our feline friends are going to be offering some very interesting services to the public. So we will choose this and we will choose it by clicking use services layout at the top. So here we have our dummy content. And again, you can add placeholder, you can replace the placeholder content with your own just by typing in. And if I want to make this bold, I can do that. And if I want to make the text larger, I can make it huge. Or I can add my own size if I want to make it really huge. All right, so let's publish this. So you'll notice that it's asking us twice, do we really want to publish? This is because we want to make really sure that you're ready to publish the page. 
Although in our case, if we go and visit the site, you'll see that there's a message that the site hasn't been launched yet. So when you create a brand new site, we keep it private for you and it's in coming soon mode until you're ready to launch. So you don't have to worry, even though you're publishing the page, you are not actually making that live to the world until you publish your entire site. So we've published our new page. Now, if I refresh the site here, you'll notice that the update we made is live. So the picture's live. But the new services page is not live, and that's because we still need to add it to our menu. So if we go back to the dashboard and we click view all pages, we want to add our new page to the menu, and that's done in a spot called the customizer. So under design, we have an item called customize, and this launches the tool called the customizer, which allows us to change various site-wide settings. So while this is loading, you'll notice that it still says just site title, and that's not great because that's quite generic. So we want to change that. So while we're in the customizer, we're going to do two things. We're going to change the site title, and we're going to add our new services page. So here we go with our customizer. I'm going to click site identity. Site identity is where you can do something like upload a logo, and in our case, we want to change the site title to Fabulous Feline Friends. And the tagline is another piece of text that you can add, and you'll notice that this updated in real time. It took a second to refresh, but it updated here, and we can see it before we save anything. We can make sure it's as we like it. Tagline, we can add something like, welcome to our fabulous site. It's an extra piece of information that usually displays below or near the site title. And if you're running a business, for example, you might want to have a little promotional tagline or you can even have your address and phone number there. So I, before we save these changes, I want to click the back button and I want to go into menus because we want to add our services page to the menu. So if we click primary here, we'll see that we are missing our services page because we haven't added it yet. So I'm going to click add items. And by default, all our published pages are here. So not a draft page. If you started a draft but didn't actually publish it, it won't be here yet. So I want to click services. And that's great. I want to reorder this so that services is before contact. So I'm going to click the little reorder button because you can see by default here it's at the end. I'm going to click the little up button and you'll see that it has moved just to the left, which is how we want it. And now I'll say done. There's also a way to drag and drop menu items, but I find the reorder button a little bit easier to use. So you can see here that menu locations, there's a couple of different areas to display a menu. We have primary, and then if you scroll down, we also have a, a footer menu area in this theme. The footer menu area is something that we can see what it looks like by clicking the checkbox here. And now this will pop in our menu here. So it's the theme in WordPress that drives the location of the menus and the location of your logo and sort of the overall look and feel of your site. That's driven by the theme. I'm going to click the Save Changes button now to save everything we did. And if we go visit our site here and click Refresh, you'll see that it has picked up the changes we made, our site title, our tagline, and the new items in our menu in the order we wanted it. I'm going to click the X here to get out of the customizer. And I mentioned themes. If you don't like the default theme that we gave you here, you can definitely change it. So under Design, just below Customize, you'll see Themes. And the ones that we recommend are in this recommended themes area. You can click on the info button to see a larger view of it. You can even open a live demo if you want to see it even more up close. And you can take a look around. When you activate the theme on your site, you will not lose your content. I'm going to go back now. It's a common uh, fear that people have that if they switch themes, you're going to lose your content, but you won't. You will still have your pages and posts. When switching to some themes, we do sometimes put your home page as a draft and pull in the dummy content of the new theme that you're, chosen, that you're choosing. But you can always go back into drafts and pull out your home page if we did turn it into a draft. So it won't be lost. So that's it for the demo. I'm going to stop things here, but I'm going to turn it over now to Q&A, and hopefully we can answer any questions that you didn't get answered during the demo.